Hello and welcome to the Sound on Sound Recording and Mixing Podcast channel. I am Eddie Bazil. In this podcast, I'm going to demonstrate how to use various transient shapers to process a selection of different audio files. But before we jump into the meat of this podcast, let's explore what transient shapers are and how they work. Nowadays, more and more producers head for a transient shaping tool before using an equalizer. Whereas equalizers are excellent for working on specific frequencies or a range of frequencies, transient shapers use detection circuits to extract and split the incoming audio signal into two distinct parts, transients and body, and offer editing and processing functions for each part. Different transient shapers behave in different ways and offer different tools to process each part, but ultimately they all strive to do the same thing, which is to allow processing of both the attack transients and sustain release portions of a sound independently before being combined at the output stage. Transient shapers can dynamically alter a sound's response and thus have become excellent sound design and mixing tools. Quite often, simple transient boosts can yield better results than broadband equalizer boosts when trying to get a sound to cut through the mix. Alternatively, transient shapers can work magic on sounds that are transient rich but lack a well-controlled and specified body. I have on many occasions resolved imbalances that exist between transients and the body of a specific sound by working on redefining the sustain and release elements of the sound. Guitar lines, piano hits, and anything that's either plucked or hit can often display this type of transient, non-transient imbalance. And this is where transient shapers excel at becoming corrective tools. In example one, I use Acoustica Audio's Diamond Transient tool to add clarity and punch to a state drum beat. First, the dry version. And now the processed version. Acoustica Audio's Diamond Transient is a refined weapon that does far more than process transients. It comes laden with a three-band compander, which is essentially a three-band threshold-dependent expander compressor, a preamp, a clipper, various envelope and dynamic shaping tools, parallel processing, and much more. I'm using subtle expansion across all three bands with emphasis on pronouncing the low and high frequencies. Using a fast dynamic model, in this instance, Model 5, and dialing in various threshold settings by using the transition controls for each band, it was a doddle to get the desired drum elements to punch through. I often overprocess when using transient shapers and balance the overall sound by using parallel processing. With this example, I accented the lows and highs and smoothed out the final response by using the parallel mix function. The result is a punchy yet clean response. In the second example, I'm going to process a drum beat using Boss Digital's Transgressor 2 plugin. The aim is to highlight the attack transient so the individual drum elements cut through the beat and pronounce the body with high end processing so as to afford some presence for the overall beat. Here is the dry version. And now the processed version. Transgressor 2 is my go-to plugin for all drum-based transient processing. Its GUI is simple yet detailed, but what it can do under the hood makes this one of the best transient shaping tools available. The plugin splits the incoming signal into two sections. One deals with transient processing, while the other deals with the sustained element of the sound. Each section employs a four-band equalizer as the primary processor. Shaping is confined to a simple hold and release envelope, and there is a gain knob to manage the overall output. Basic filtering and retriggering are provided at the output stage to further shape the processed response. I've set the retrigger to be fast so as to capture all the drum elements in the beat. In the transient section, I've selected two bell shaped filters to accent 793 Hz and 10.3 kHz respectively, and I've adopted a high shelf boost at around 4.5 kHz. These settings allow for a crisp and strong attack response. With the sustain element, I've used a gentle low shelf at 200 Hz, 
and a narrow bell with a 2 dB boost at 500 Hz. These have been supplemented with a generous boost of 7 dBs using a high shelf at 6.6 .6 kHz. These settings help to tighten and boost the mid-range frequencies with emphasis on the presence of the body. The beat sounds tight and crisp but airy at the same time. Example 3 demonstrates how a transient processor can add grit and thickness to an uninteresting drum beat. The weapon of choice here is the daddy of them all, SPL's transient designer. Many moons ago, I owned the hardware version of this beast and I was stunned at how useful it was. It could dramatically alter the response of any sound by using three knobs and not much else. The engine that drove it was beautifully designed. In fact, the ideology and implementation has been truthfully replicated with the current software offerings. Here is the dry version. And now the processed version. I would be lying if I said I did something magical with this plugin. All I did was to apply a positive gain boost of 7 dBs for the attack, a positive gain boost of 3.48 dBs for the release, and a 3 dB boost for the output gain. Attack and release can be adjusted by applying either a positive or negative gain. Positive attack values emphasize attack events, whereas negative values smooth them out. Positive sustain values lengthen the sustain of the sound, whereas negative values shorten them. That's pretty much it. However, it is when using these two controls together that the magic happens. I will leave you to experiment with this wonderful plugin. You'll be amazed at the variety of results you'll achieve. In example 4, I use Isotope Neutron 3's Transient Shaper to tame an 808 baseline's attack transients and add sustain to the body so as to afford a more tonal bass sound than a percussive tonal kick. Here is the dry version. And now the processed version. Isotope's Transient Shaper is the most transparent of all the transient shapers covered in this podcast. It can shape the sound's attack and sustain elements without altering the overall level. It has a detailed yet uncluttered GUI which houses and displays all the functions on a single page. I have created two frequency bands, one that encompasses the entire frequency range of the bass amp up to 3 kHz and another that deals with everything beyond 3 kHz. In effect, the first band shapes the sustain of the bass sound and the second band highlights the attack transients. I settled on balance for the envelope mode. This allows for a quick attack and medium release time when recovering from one transient to the next. For the first band, I selected a sharp contour to shape the envelope and coupled this with a hefty sustain. I did not alter the attack as I wanted to highlight only the sustain element of the sound. It is this that gives the bass the sustained musical tone. For the second band, I stayed with the sharp contour setting but highlighted the attack transients to allow for a distinct attack for the bass line. Once you create frequency bands, it helps to use the solo feature provided to hear each band in isolation. This allows for detailed fine tuning of each band's processing. The result comes across as musical enriching content and the overall tone sounds far more like a sub bass than an 808 percussive tone. Example 5 involves taking a piano line and extending the short staccato notes into more pronounced and sustained notes whilst maintaining the overall response of the body. Think of this process as making things sound better. The plugin of choice here is Sonibel's wonderful Entropy Q+. First, the dry version. And now the processed version.
Entropy Q Plus is without a doubt one of the most creative tools I have in my weapons locker. Although billed as an 8-band interactive parametric equalizer of sorts, it is actually far more than that. It cleverly differentiates between harmonic, which can be generated, and inharmonic content, and allows the user to process both the detected transients and generated harmonics in isolation or together. A process so nibble term as entropy. Entropy can be used in broadband mode or band by band. It is unmatched when it comes to processing complex and rich instrument sounds. What it does with plucked and strummed sounds is nothing short of obscene. But it doesn't end there. For processing dialogue and vocals, it is in a class of its own. For this particular example, I started by using entropy in broadband mode. I applied a 22% entropy to the whole signal, 41% strength, and 57% smoothness. I always start with broadband processing when using entropy, as it allows me to hear what parts of the signal need altering be they transient highlighting or harmonic generation. I then selected band 5 and used negative entropy to generate harmonics at 1.758 kHz. This single entropy process created the sustained harmonic element that you can hear in the final version. The result is a more fluid and dynamic response thanks to the harmonics being generated and sustained on the short struck notes. Pronouncing the transients of the remaining signal further highlighted the generated harmonics. I must say, I always get amazed at how easily and quickly it is to dial in all manner of new sonic textures using this wonderful plugin. In the sixth and final example, I'm going to use Eventide's Fission to create a sound design snippet. First, the dry version. And here is the processed version. Although the snippet sounds okay without all the processing, I always like to maul things a little just to see where I can go with my imagination. And whenever I feel I need a creative tool, I look to Eventide first. My aim with this snippet was to pretty much sound design all the sound elements within the snippet using only Fission. The track count is minimal, four in total. When presented with a minimalistic mix, it pays to think sound design and offer variety across all the elements, otherwise the staid repetition of naturally occurring sounds can get a touch boring. Fission is a simple yet well thought out transient shaper, but to call it just a transient shaper would be insulting. Although it follows the usual protocol of splitting the transients of body into two distinct sections, it comes supplied with much more than simple equalization and envelope shaping tools. It comes laden with Eventide's legendary dynamics and effects. The aim is to provide the user with sound design as well as production tools. I won't spend valuable time explaining all the features of this plugin, as it would end up being a full-on review. However, I implore you to download the demo and play around with it. You'll be pleasantly surprised at what this plugin can achieve. I will list what I've done to each sound and include before and after audio examples. Let's start with the baseline. Here is the dry version. And now the processed version. I didn't want to change the overall sound of the bass, but rather give it some motion and a more vibrant low end. To achieve this, I used both transient and tonal effects. I set the focus more towards transients and adopted a long decay value of 85, but kept smoothing at 20. I then applied the delay effect to give a gentle repeat of the attack transients. With the tonal effect, I applied equalization to pronounce the low and mid frequencies. You can hear the repeats when the bass is isolated, but within the mix, it is barely audible, but has the effect of adding motion to the bass line. 
Moving on to the piano line, I decided to dramatically alter the texture and color. Have a listen to the dry version. And now the processed version. I started by setting the focus slider to midway so both sections have equal say in the processing. I used no smoothing whatsoever, adopted a decay value of 20 for the transients, and for the transient effects, I adopted a gate and an equalizer, and used a hefty threshold so as to trigger the gate across the whole signal. This resulted in the transients coming across as hard and choppy. With the tonal effects, I used a delay effect set to warp and using modulation. I set the time to a dotted eighth, 38% feedback, and low cut at 33 hertz to remove some of the low frequencies. The result is very distinctive and comes across as quite musical, but the choppy attack is what grabs the attention and allows the piano to rise above all the other sounds. Next up is the synth line. Here is the dry version. And now the processed version. The synth line was a bit prominent, so I decided to tone it down a touch, but wash it with acres of reverb. I set focus to halfway and extended both the smoothing and transient decay to maximum. I used the same reverb sizes for both the transient and tonal effects, a size of 50. I set the transient reverb decay time to 1.1 seconds, but extended the tonal reverb decay time to 2.7 seconds. I varied the damping for each effect until I achieved a warm yet clear texture. Although the synth line is washed in reverb, it still sounds clean and clear thanks to the pronounced transients. Finally, we come to the drum beat. Here is the dry version. And now the processed version. My aim here was to make the drum sound a little more punchy and to tighten the sustain elements of the drum sounds. I set focus to just past halfway, veering more towards tonal effects. I adopted no smoothing and a transient decay of only seven. This made sure to keep the transients short and tight. For transient effects, I adopted a gate and an equalizer. I set a threshold value of minus 65 dB to encompass most of the drum beat and boosted some of the mid and high frequencies. With tonal effects, I used an equalizer and boosted the low frequencies to make sure the kick sound would cut through the beat. I also attenuated the high end by 9 dBs. The result is actually quite subtle, but lends itself to allowing the beat to cut through the myriad of sound effects adopted by the other sounds. Have a listen to the snippet in its entirety. That's it for now. Thanks for listening. This has been Eddie Brazil for Sound on Sound. Thank you for listening. And be sure to check out the show notes page for this episode, where you'll find further information along with web links and details of all the other episodes. Oh, and just before you go, let me point you to the soundonsound.com forward slash podcasts website page, where you can explore what's playing on our other channels. 